All right, welcome to a little Quixel Mega Scans combined with a Quixel or a V-Ray for Cinema 4D tutorial here. Um, this is going to be about, as you can see, Quixel Mega Scans uh, and V-Ray for Cinema 4D, with uh, the emphasis here on the MOS. So I looked around on the internet quite a bit. I was trying to figure out how I can make the MOS on logs and stuff from Mega Scans not look absolutely awful. I'll show you a little render here, put it up on screen for you, uh, for what it looks like if you don't use this technique. Uh, it's not very good. It looks pretty bad. Uh, so I was trying to figure out how to make it not look like this. And basically the solution that I found is to use the fuzz map that comes with it along with fur. So V-Ray fur is basically the solution here. Um, and as you can see, I would say this looks a lot better than the, um, the regular just plug in the maps no for um, that just doesn't look very good so here is the way that I went about this so you create a scene import your your blog or whatever in this case uh, I am using this log I believe um, from Quixel mega scans if you're interested uh, so bring up your bridge uh, go to scripts oh gotta select an asset go to scripts um, doesn't really matter uh, if it's what you're using. You can do custom or whatever, uh, but I use uh, V-Ray since I'm using V-Ray. Uh, it doesn't matter. I, I'm assuming this will work for um, anything. It worked for um, Cinema 4D even though I'm using the Max export. Uh, so I clicked on this one. It doesn't really matter whether you use either one of these, I don't believe, uh, as long as you're using uh, V-Ray. So you do that. Uh, it gives you all of your stuff here. All this gives you your albedo, displacement, fuzz. This is super important. Important. This is what you'll use for your mask, uh, your FBX, normal roughness, you know, all that stuff. Uh, oops. And then you come back into Cinema 4D. You import the stuff, plug in your materials, and then you are set to start setting up your stuff. Um, so do you import your asset here. Um, and then the big thing here, I'll just duplicate this. We'll go over. Let's duplicate it. Uh, you right click on the name of it, go over to V-Ray Bridge Tags, uh, V-Ray Fur. So these are the settings that'll come with with default, um, length 15, thickness, all that stuff. Um, basically, these are the ones you'll play with, and this last one is the big one. Um, so the settings that I used, I found these to be the best for the type of moss that I was going for, which was just kind of small fuzzy stuff. Um, it is a length of 0.25, uh, pretty small, obviously from 15, uh, it, it gives you quite a bit uh, of length. So uh, you don't want a whole lot uh, since it's just, just going to be like a little covering of moss. Um, and then thickness doesn't really matter, It's just keep it kind of small so you don't have big giant uh, super thick like log base, logs basically coming off of your moss. Um, gravity, since it's so short, the gravity and bend I don't really need. so. Why calculate it, so I just put it to zero. Um, the sides, I just left this a default, doesn't really matter, same with the variation, doesn't really matter since it's such a small uh, covering of moss. Uh, but this is the big thing right here. So you want uh, to go to per area. So this thing has a ton of faces. I believe it has over a million or some something like that. Uh, so you don't want to use per face, you want to use per area. So basically what this does is for the area that it's putting moss on, it is covering it with like this amount of, um, of fur. So like in these big areas, I was using like right here and right here especially. Uh, if you set it with default, it's at 0.2. That won't cover it at all. Um, it, it just does a little bit. I tried like three and I, I just tried going up exponentially. Um, I said to like 50 and I still wasn't it, so I just went straight up all the way to 250 and that seemed to be a lot better. Uh, so this is a setting that I decided to go with. Um, but to figure out where it wants to put the moss, uh, by the way, you have to duplicate this because wherever you put this fur, if you were to render this out without a duplicated one uh, in the same spot, then it will just render like all the stuff that is not covered in moss, it'll render that invisible. So that's why it's duplicated. Um, but you go over to this, um, actually we'll go on this one. So you go to the density, you plug in this fuzz mat, 
uh, mask. So it's just a black and white image. Um, I'm gonna use this one. This is one I kind of edited to make a little bit better. So if you use this, this one right here, uh, it'll put a bunch of fuzz like over here and um, it'll make it like brown. So you don't want you don't want that obviously. Um, you don't want your, your moss being brown. Um, there's some white as well. Moss isn't usually brown or white unless uh, you know it's got bird poop on it or something. So uh, you want it green, so you want to keep it in the green areas. So you go you can take this the map into Photoshop. Uh, just take the albedo, you can just drop it into Photoshop. I, I was playing around with a couple different things here, a um, couple of different techniques for trying this. I found this one to kind of work the best. Uh, so you dra drag in your albedo, you go over to the magic wand tool, you just start clicking on, whoops, you don't want that. Uh, there we go. Just click on the areas, you'll have to up the tolerance and everything, but you click on all the areas where, the, where there's green, um, that there will be moss. So obviously like not in this area, this is just like wood rot. Uh, same with this, just like these areas, uh, right here, 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 all this stuff. Um, you'll want to select that, um, and then you will create another layer underneath that, fill it in with black, and then underneath that you will invert your mask, and actually you'll just get rid of the mask altogether um, and make a white layer underneath that so it gets all that. That's the easiest way to do it, I found. Uh, so you create the mask that way, and then you bring it into here, click on your fuzz mask, and then it doesn't matter. Um, and then it puts it, all, all the, the hair and the areas that you've selected. Uh, as you can see with the final render that I did, there was some spots that I didn't quite get all the way. So make sure you take your time, uh, fill in all the, or select all of the little green parts uh, that you need. and. That way you have the most accurate mask as well. Um, you don't need to mess with the, the sampling. Um, none, nip, doesn't matter. Uh, blur, just don't put any blur on it. That's obviously why you're using the mask. Uh, I mean, I see you could put a small amount of blur on it if you wanted to, uh, but didn't really need it in my case, so I just left it off here. But the big thing is make sure you play around with the, this distribution number here. Um, so it fills in the entire area that you're looking for and put in this mask. Put those two things in uh, and you will be set to go. Um, I was kind of creating this just because I didn't need or I, I needed to know how to do this and I couldn't really find it anywhere. It seems like not a lot of people uh, are using Cinema 40 for their V-Ray rendering uh, so there's not a lot out there on it and especially for mega scans with them being somewhat newish uh, there's not really a whole lot you can use kind of documentation and stuff to try and figure stuff out, but uh, it can take some time. So I figured I would make this video kind of help people out that are trying to use Quixel Mega Scans um, and not have their moss look awful. Uh, so hopefully this helped you. If not, I'm sorry. Uh, you'll have to try and play with it yourself and figure it out. Uh, but these are the kind of the settings that I use to try and make it look not awful, and I would say it worked. So uh, it's pretty successful in my opinion, but hopefully this helped. If not, it sucks. Do it yourself, I guess. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll try to get back to you guys and answer any questions that I can. Uh, but other than that, I don't really have much for you guys. Uh, have a good day.